Right. So here is the point, and it's very not. It's very um, interesting. Bearing in mind what we all do with regards to trusts. Okay. Um, so this is a new. Well, it's a new article about deliberate deprivation of capital for care fee planning. And what I thought I'd do is rather than me try and be pompous and uh, summarize the article, I thought I'd just read it. Um, and especially since this is being recorded, it probably makes a, a, better, a better narrative. So the local government and social care ombudsman has issued guidance to English councils making decisions whether someone has deliberately deprived themselves of assets to avoid paying residential care home fees. Disputes regularly arise when a person who goes into long-term care has previously given away or otherwise disposed of assets, thereby, thereby affecting the means testing of their contribution to their care fees. The local authority responsible for providing care must take account of this intentional deprivation of capital. The test applied by the public authorities for these anti-deprivation provisions is whether a benefits claimant deprived themselves of capital for the significant operative purpose of securing entitlement to the benefit, in which case the notional capital would continue to be taken into account for means testing. Placing assets into trust can also be deemed to be capital deprivation if done in order to secure the benefits in question, as demonstrated in the England and Wales Court of Protection case re-LMS in 2020. Such decisions are often very nuanced, but are not always made equitably, <clears throat> says the LGSCO. Sometimes local councils wrongly assume that all gifts are deprivation of capital, or they may wrongly apply the personal expenses allowance to people who fund their own care. In many cases, they have not kept proper records of how their decisions are reached, says the local government ombudsman. The ombudsman said decisions about whether people have intentionally deprived themselves of capital can be a difficult issue and a motive for the families involved. The issue has become more contentious as pressures on council budgets increase and the number of people in need of care continues to grow. The Ombudsman's guidance is aimed at financial assessment practitioners in local authorities to make decisions fairly and to justify them. It uses casework examples to demonstrate the points commonly raised in complaints received by the Ombudsman. The guidance warns councils that they should not simply assume that the person has deprived themselves of an asset with the intention of reducing what they should pay towards the cost of care and support. They should first fully explore whether there are other valid reasons why someone no longer owns an asset or should ask the service user or their representative for their version of events before making decisions on deprivation of capital. The council should also bear in mind that a decision of an intentional deprivation of capital requires the service user to have had, quote, reasonable expectation that they may need to pay towards that care and support at the time of the deprivation. The timing of the disposal of an asset can thus help inform a decision about the person's motivation for disposing of it. However, local authorities are under a duty to act when they suspect deliberate deprivation has taken place. Councils rightly expect that all those who can afford to contribute financially to their own care actually do so in accordance with national and local charging policies. If people try to avoid paying for their care, they, this ultimately puts further pressure on the system and is unfair to the taxpayer. So what's interesting about that is it's basically the local government ombudsman slating local authorities for being too heavy handed um, with regards to uh, deliberate deprivation. And what it also then helps us as practitioners to do is to understand that the local authorities should be exploring and questioning all other reasons as to why in our case the APT has been done before just simply assuming that it's being done for reasons of deliberate deprivation of capital. So I thought that that's something that you know the article has links to the local government guidance, it has links to the sorts of factors that should be taken into consideration by the local authority um, prior to making a decision. And I, I find it, I thought it was a really useful article, especially in light of the uh, naysayers and those that basically slate us for offering trust planning to a client, because yet again, even the LGO here, the local government ombudsman, 
is saying there's no problem with doing it at all. So um, for those of you who are step members, that uh, is this, this piece is referenced in today's uh, step digest. Hooray. One score one point for the good guys. I think so. Well, I think it certainly <clears throat> makes the will make the local authorities think a little bit more um, about just being able to go around and say, oh, well, you know, this is this, this is that, this is the other. Um, and it's deliberate deprivation, just as I'm actually going through a financial means assessment for myself with a client. Um, I've seen South Gloucestershire Council take a positive step. Um, and the new South Gloucestershire means assessment form does just ask, do you own a property? And if you don't, have you disposed of it in the last two years? It doesn't say, have you ever owned a property? So, so this whole... Does, how does one fill in this form then? Let's say I've sold an APT plus or an APT for that matter to a client four years ago. Yeah. And they go into uh, uh, me uh, into care and the family gets like the, the section, is it section 47 forms? Whatever, the, they get the forms. And that's a C, uh, CM, uh, CM41 form, yeah. CM41 um, to assess care. But it, as mm -hmm. you just say, it doesn't say, have you ever owned a property? You Have you owned a property in the last two years? Would they put down no? Because technically they are no, not. No, no, it doesn't say that. It says, yeah, do you currently own a property? And then if you tick no, it says, have you disposed or sold of the property in the last two years? Which, okay. if you did the APT four years ago, you haven't. So the answer then would be no, and presumably no. sail through. And then it's up, it's up to the, the local authority within further examination to turn around and say, oh, okay, well, have you ever owned a property? Right. Well, it makes sense that over time, the, the push-pull between home ownership and care fees is only going to intensify because the local authority is not going to find money elsewhere. And so they'll want to... I'm I'm hypothecating here and please make shoot holes in this where 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 it needs to be. The the form, so right now if I were to say to my clients, we have we have we have been advised that most local authorities will want to know whether you've disposed of the property within the last two years or not. Um mm -hmm. or it's advisable that you do this not one year, not two years, not six weeks, but five, ten years before this all becomes a thing. Um well, it, it's a it's a reason for when people say, Oh, I gotta do it seven years before, it's just another it's another benchmark or flag in the sand that you can give to people when they say, you know, you talk quite correctly in terms of the CARE Act and you say, you know, the CARE Act says it must be done before the need for care and support is reasonably foreseeable. And then they say, oh, what does that mean? And you give them the, the, the list of, of, of guidance that we know, you know, ad nauseam. And then you can say, but what I do know is on the current incarnation of the means assessment form is that the initial starter for question uh, starter for 10 question is have you owned a property or have you sold or disposed of a property in the last two years so mr and mrs client your starter to be one step ahead of the game where the local authority is concerned is to make sure that you do the apt at least two years before care is required and then if they go oh but what if i what if i so it doesn't matter because if as long as care isn't foreseeable the two years isn't a hard and fast rule all the two-year rule is, is that's the one that you've got to declare initially on the form. 